I'm going to go ahead and build the Ice Cream Store version 1 program, which is similar to the program that you're going to do for your homework. Now what I've got here on my screen, I've got the um, requirements and specification document that I wrote already, and a copy of this is posted for you, and I've got a nice brand new workbook to do my work in. So first of all, let's look this over. Um, up here first, I gave a brief discussion description of what the um, program needs to do and then I have some use cases. Now in the first use case uh, this is a normal case and I, what I did was figure out the cost of the ice cream, the tip and the total uh, for one scoop, for two scoops or for ten scoops. And just briefly ice cream costs 75 cents a, a scoop. You can order what I want to do is set something up where the user can order any number of scoops and add a 15% tip. Now, I also wrote use cases for uh, erroneous input. Uh, for example, an unreasonable integer such as zero or a negative number, or something like a non-integer number, like if they write five, F-I-V-E or something. Now, we don't actually have any way to deal with these bad use cases at the moment. We will later, we'll get to that. But in the meantime, I wanted to at least document that, you know, I thought that such things exist. Now, what's going to happen to our program right now if somebody does something like that? Probably a runtime error. Uh, well, we can't deal with it. But what we will do is make a program that works properly in the uh, correct input case. And then later on, like I said, we'll get the other techniques. Okay, so the most important thing here is these tests because this is the way I'm going to be able to tell if I did my work right and I worked these out on a calculator. Now the next step is the specification. And what I did was think about, okay, how am I going to meet the requirements that I wrote down on the first page? Well, first of all, I need to think about my interface and what I'm going to have is a text box for entering the number of scoops and I made up a name for it, a list box for printing the receipt, and an order button to press when the customer is ready to place the order. And then I also thought about the constants and variables that I'm going to need. And I went through the process mentally. And actually, it helps to do this physically, to actually um, do the computation and think about what variables you need. So I'm going to have a constant for the price per scoop. That's a constant because it's not going to change during the running of the program. And a constant for the percent of the tip. And I got those from the requirements. Then I have a variable for the number of scoops, and it's going to be type um, integer, a variable for the ice cream cost, a variable for the amount of the tip, and a variable for the total cost. And the way I got those was to think through the computation. And uh, as I did my flow chart, I'm going to read the number of scoops when the button is pushed. So pushing the button is my event. I'll read the number of scoops, and to compute the value, I need to figure out the number of scoops times the price. Then I have my variable for that. The total cost of the scoops times the percent tip, and that'll be the tip. And then getting the total cost. And my final step is to print the receipt. Okay, so I'm mentally set to go. I have everything laid out, and I'm going to go ahead and start doing my code. Now, the first thing I need to do is go over to the developer tab and I'm going to use a user form for this. So let's go into Visual Basic and I think I'm going to start by creating my user form. Now I'll have to remember later to create the uh, workbook open procedure that makes the form show up. Okay, so mentally I have to remember that. Alright, here's my form. Now guys, I'm doing this on a Mac. Uh, sorry, on Windows. Uh, the process on the Mac is extremely similar, and I'm not going to do two videos. So I've showed you all the techniques you, you need to use to do it on a Mac, and you should be able to do it now. Um, you won't be able to drag the and resize the user form window like that. You know, you'll have to change the height and width in the column in, in the um, properties, but that's pretty minor. 
So I didn't put down on here what I'm going to call the form. So let's just call it um, form ice cream store. And um, I'm going to change the caption as well. So I wanted to say something like order your ice cream. Okay. And um, let's make it a better color. So background color. Let's uh, make it something a little more ice creamy. Let's say maybe oh, that's kind of a yucky color. How about this guy? All right, that's a little bit better. So there we are. Now, the next step, I need to put controls on here. So when I click on here, here's my toolbox. Now, I'm going to start by putting on the controls that I mentioned in my design, but I also need some labels uh, to just inform the user what's going on. So let's see. Um, Actually, let me start with a label here. So I'll put this at the top. And I'm going to make it say, Welcome to Cindy's Ice Cream Store. And uh, we don't want that tiny little font. So let's come over here and make the font maybe size 16. Let's see how that looks. Okay, not too bad. I like it. So there we go, and I'm going to position it in the middle. All right. Now I want a place for the user to enter how many um, scoops of ice cream they want. Oh, and by the way, because I'm not going to refer to this label in the program, I'll just leave it it with the name label one. I don't care what its name is. So next, uh, let's have another label that says um, enter number of scoops. So here the caption I'm going to put enter number of scoops. Okay. And let's make it just a little bigger font. So instead of 8, uh, let's go with 12. Okay, and now we need a text box for the person to do that in. So let's see if I can find the text box here. Yes. Okay, and we'll put it right next to the label. doesn't have to be huge. Nobody's going to get a thousand scoops of ice cream. Now this one I am going to use in my program, so I'm going to name it. And um, TXT, let's see what I decided to name it over here. Um, TXT scoops. Okay. All right. So there's that. Um, and then I'm going to have, I, I need a list box to put the receipt in. So let's see if we can find that. Here's a list box. So I'll put it over here actually make it a little bit bigger. And the name of this guy is going to be LST receipt. And I'm going to uh, keep the font the same. I'll, I'll see how it looks and then I'll decide if I want to change it. And the other thing I need is a button to push to order. So let's get ourselves a command button here. And I'll put it right here. And I'm going to put a caption on it that says uh, place order. Maybe we should make it say click to place order. Huh? So click to place order. And that guy needs a name. Don't want to just have it be command button one. So I'm going to call it button uh, order. 
Okay. So I've got my user interface built. I can come back and elaborate on it later. For example, I might want to put a label that tells how much each scoop costs. That would be nice to the user. Now, but for now, I want to go ahead and write my code. So I'm going to double click this. And here is the place for me to put the code for the event of somebody clicking that button. Now, I have to put a comment here. The instructions for your assignment tell you what to put in the comment that goes at the top. I'm just going to uh, do something simple and say order ice cream and print receipt and another okay so now we're ready to write the code here and first we've got to set up our constants and our variables that we're going to use. Now, of course, while we're writing the code, we might think of some other variables, and that's okay. We can always come back and change things. Okay, so, uh, now I do have some constants I use in this program, right? One for the price per scoop and one for the percent tip. And I have a choice. I can either make those local or global. I think just to illustrate global, I'll make them global. So here we're going to have a constant um, scoop price. Whoops, got my S there. All caps, so scoop price as double equals point seven five and I'm going to have a constant um, tip percent as double equals 0.15. So it's not really the percent, it's a fraction. Now on your program, you're going to have a banner comment at the top that gives your name and your section number and stuff like that. Okay, now I'm ready to do my program, and I had thought through already some variables that I need. So let's declare those. So I'm going to put dim. Remember, that's how we start with that. And our variable for the number of scoops. Oh, okay, I switched away, and it's telling me you can't have dim all by itself. So num scoops as integer. And then we're going to have dim, um, it's going to yell at me again, but let's do it. Scoop cost, tip amount, and total cost. Okay, so dim scoop cost as double. Now you can double up, but you have to put the S each time. So, for, for example, tip amount as double um, total cost as double. Or I could start a new line with a new dim. Okay, well, I've gotten so far, I'm running out of time on this video, so I'll complete this on a new video. See you then.